As a kid, the idea of being able to emit light like one of our superheroes from the pages of a comic book or the latest TV animation would have made you the bee's knees amongst your friends. Granted, that initial power always seemed to come with other powers that usually, if not, always resulted in the ability to fly, which I can't deny would have also been a cool power to possess. Then I'm forced to also consider invisibility, invulnerability, super strength and speed, and before I know it, I've gone from superhero to super pain in the ass that no doubt would have led to a global dictatorship. So on hindsight, possibly that train of thought could have led me down a slippery slope and into the open arms of megalomania. But what if there was one of those superpowers in that listing that we all possess and yet don't even know it? The old saying about someone being able to light up a room when they enter it is a clue. Each and every human on the planet that's alive produces light, and in particular from the face, though the light wasn't matching variations in the body's temperature. I'm very well aware this all sounds like a sci-fi script, but it is indeed truth. The problem for us humans is that the light is a thousand times less than we are capable of seeing, at least registering with the conscious brain. Over the course of the day, it seems these light emissions change, as we would expect. But before you start slipping on your fluorescent tight leggings and silk capes, you should also consider you're not alone. Every living creature emits this form of infrared light. Japanese scientists from Sinde, Japan, using exceptionally sensitive cameras, were able to see the faint light and mark its rise and fall during the course of a day. Over the course of three days, five Japanese volunteers sat in front of the camera, exposing their bare chests over 20-minute intervals, every three hours, which started at 10 a.m. and finished at 10 p.m. Most of us will sympathise with the findings which suggested the light was at its lowest in the early morning. I don't think we need to be Sherlock Holmes to figure that one out. However, it peaked around 4pm every day. So the next time we hear someone comment on a pregnant friend or partner, Oh my goodness, you're glowing. We may ponder the reasons behind such a statement. Faces glowed more than any other part of the body, and it is possible it may be linked to the metabolic fluctuations of the body's rhythms. Or is it also possible that we are able to register these lower signals by simply sidestepping the conscious brain? In my travels around the world, researching all manner of weird and wonderful and sometimes downright frightening, these light experiences bring me back to the tests conducted around the world by respected EVP specialists who communicate with beings beyond our ability to comprehend for the most part. Electrical voice phenomena has a huge history within the realms of paranormal research. However, there is a distinct difference between random pips and pops and white noise and class A responses from bodiless forms. A quick trawl through the internet will uncover a plethora of alleged EVP samples, which are simply random noises that mean nothing unless we are told what we are hearing by the researcher. Only then do we possibly hear the patterns that could make up these possible sounds. There are some things to consider when dealing with random noise, though. The more unbalanced the listener to white noise, the more likely they are to hear voices in something of which there is none. Having to screw up your face and hop on one leg whilst balancing a fish tank in order to hear a voice that sounds like hello is not a joy for anyone. Class A are the way to go, and they are rare. They are like listening to a conversation in a room when no one else is present, yet they are distinct and clear. EVP tests around the world were addressed with asking one question in particular, time and time again. Each time the answer came back the same. 
How do you see us? We would ask. The silence in between was palatable, but each time it kept coming back as light. This threw the proverbial cat among the pigeons. They see us like light, like an aura. These tests conducted in the Tohoku Institute of Technology proves we produce light, although too weak for us to see it. Is it possible, beyond our limited perceptions of the electromagnetic spectrum, something on the outer edges of it does see it? Former researcher John Keel spoke of beings that came and went through the superspectrum. Whatever responded to the EVP test worldwide could possibly see us in the infrared spectrum. It is important to note that many of the experiences and research I've conducted over the decades has shown a connection to these beings coming up through the infrared spectrum and into our visible spectrum, just like those coming down through the ultraviolet light. Are we to assume the beings that can see us as light are also those that come through the infrared spectrum and materialize here? We have a vast array of technology that can see into the infrared spectrum. And being part of a TV show for years that chased ghosts all around the world, we used infrared light, which, as my research has shown, actually served to drive the phenomena back depending on which light source you used and whichever side of the spectrum they came from. Needless to say, those from the infrared had little patience with us. The amount of deception they used was on a power of its own and is legendary. Learning to spot their patterns was part of being a good researcher. However, when you interfered into their business, if they couldn't get to you, they simply went to the next thing that you held important and targeted them or it instead. Over time, you learn to pick your fights and when to turn away. So, here we are, possibly recognizing a connection between us producing infrared light and something else outside of us being able to see the infrared light we emit and something that comes from the lower ranges of the electromagnetic spectrum through the infrared and into here, our reality. So next time you think you have a haunting or live in a haunted house, it might be time to consider becoming an animal whisperer. Time to set down the tablets and cell phones and pay attention and watch an animal for its signals through its fight or flight. Not a lot of people are aware goldfish are the only animals to see in both infrared and ultraviolet. So the next time you hear a bump in the house, look toward the fish. If it's chilling, it was just a bump. A lot of animal owners will report on the likes of cats and dogs looking into corners and growling for no apparent reason. Next time it happens, shoot a secondary look toward the fish tank for signs of fight or flight reaction in them. You know, in a world which the human race has royally messed up, it may be the animal's responses and connection in accepting and understanding the signals filtered through their fight or flight that may actually, in their own way, signal the way for us to reconnect with our own instincts again. <laughs>